In this video, we solve problem 7.2.11 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says a data set includes 106 body temperatures of healthy adults, and it has a mean of 98.9 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. We're asked to construct a 99% confidence interval estimate of the mean body temperature of all healthy humans. Then we're asked, what does this sample suggest about the use of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit as the mean body temperature? So we're given something like this and we're told to round to three decimal places as needed. Now we know that whenever we are calculating a confidence interval for our sample mean and we don't know the population standard deviation, which is pretty typical, we're going to find these bounds in this way. It's given by X bar plus the, or actually X bar minus the error is less than the true population mean, which is less than X bar plus the error. So I need X bar minus the error and X bar plus the er error here, where the margin of error is given by T sub alpha over two. That depends on the level of confidence and we have a 99% confidence interval times the standard deviation of our sample divided by the square root of the sample size. And we also need degrees of freedom in order to choose the correct T distribution. The degrees of freedom in this case are given by N minus one. So we actually have almost everything that we need except for the T values, those critical T scores um, in order to solve this. But we can find those critical T values on a table that you'll have access to during your exam. So let's write down everything that we know and then use what we know to find this um, confidence interval. First of all, the data set includes 106 temperatures. So N equals 106. We've got body temperatures of healthy adults and the mean of that data set, that's X bar, is 98.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're told that the standard deviation of that data set, that's S, is 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've got this, I've got this, and I've got this. The only thing that I don't have is my T sub alpha over two. Um, of course, degrees of freedom we can find because we have N. Now we have a 99% confidence interval, or we're asked for a 99% confidence interval estimate. So that means that alpha is 1% or in decimal form 0 0.01. Now, when we look at our student T distribution for this particular sample size, if I want a 99% confidence interval, that means I want 99% of the area here and I want the area in two tails to be 1% or half of 1% in this tail and half of 1% in this tail. So when I use this here, when I see that alpha is equal to 0 0.01, that means that is the area in two tails that I'll need when I am looking up my uh, critical T value. Okay, so we've got X bar. Um, we want, and we have S and we have N. So the only thing we need to do now is find the critical T value and to find the critical T value, we need um, this alpha, the area in two tails, and then we also need degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are one less than the sample size, so that's 106 minus one, which is 105. With these two pieces of information, we can find T sub alpha over two. So I'll go to my table. You'll have access to this during the exam. I'm just looking for the page with, um, all those critical T values, the student T distribution, here it is. And remember, I need um, 105 to be my number of degrees of freedom. Now, we don't actually have 105 degrees of freedom on this table. Uh, whenever that happens, we always round down. So we're gonna round to that 100, and then we'll look for area in two tails of 0 0.01 area in two tails of 0 0.01 is right here. So it's this first column. So the closest T score that we have, according to this table is um, T equals 2.626. So 
So this is an approximation, but T sub alpha over two is approximately 2.626 given this information. Now I can take that, multiply by the standard deviation um, of the sample, divide by the square root of the sample size, that's gonna give me my error. And I'll add and subtract that error from X bar to get the upper and lower limits for our um, confidence interval. That's what I would do if I did not have technology, but with technology, I can find a better estimate of that T sub alpha over two. So I'm going to show you how to do this using Excel now. So I'll share my screen with you. This is actually data from a different problem. So let's clear all that out. Okay. And now I wanna find the T score that goes with um, an area in two tails of 0 0.01 and a 105 as my degrees of freedom. So we're going to use T dot INV dot 2T because I want area in two tails, open parentheses. The first thing it asks for is the probability. They, they're saying, what is the area in the two tails? And in our case, because we want a 99% confidence interval estimate, we wanna have alpha equals 0 0.01, that's the area in two tails. And the degrees of freedom is 105. And so we get a T sub alpha over two in that case of 2.6, two, three. So I'm going to write that down. So we'll say using Excel, this is what we got. We said that that T value, T sub alpha over two is equal to this, what you get when you input this function, T dot inverse, dot two T for two tails open parentheses, and then you put the probability or the area in two tails. Then you put your degrees of freedom, which is 105, and we got 2.623 using that method. And look how close it is to the one in the table that they had uh, 2.626. So if we use the one from the table, the 2.626, our error will be this. The error in that case is 2.626 times the sample standard deviation, which was 0 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit divided by the square root of the sample size, which is the square root of 106. And so we get an error of six or 2.626 times 0.62 divided by the square root of the sample size. And that's approximately equal to 0 0.1581 or 1581, let's say to four decimal places. Um, so that's our error. We're going to add and subtract that from X bar, or we can use this T score, which is more accurate um, and the standard deviation and the sample size. So let's try that. This is using the critical T value that we found using Excel. In that case, our margin of error is 2.623 times that standard deviation, which was 0 0.62 divided by the square root of the sample size. Now my lab statistics should accept both of these answers. It accepts a range of answers that are within a certain um, accuracy. So I get 0 0.1579. And if we round to three decimal places, it's 0 0.158. So the error is either 0 0.158 or 0 0.158. So we get 0 0.158 
either way. And we're adding and subtracting that from X bar to get these bounds for our confidence interval. Now X bar in this case was 98.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So to find my upper bound, or my upper confidence or upper limit for that confidence interval, I take X bar and I add the error. So it's 98.9 and I'm adding 0 0.158. And I get point or 99.058. And then for the lower bound, we do the same thing. We just subtract the error. Almost the same thing. We just subtract instead. So we have 98.9 minus, whoops, minus uh, 0 0.158 which gives me 98.7. So the mean lies between these two values. And if we actually go to the homework, let's look at the homework. They're asking us for an upper and lower bound and we want to round to three decimal places. So these values that I just came up with are appropriate here. The lower bound is 98.742, and the upper bound is 99.058. All right, my lab statistics likes it, so we know we did something right. Now, the next part of the question is about interpreting this confidence interval. It says, what does this suggest about the use of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit as a mean body temperature? Well, it, that depends. It depends on whether that 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is in our interval or not. Well, look at it. The lower bound is 98.742. So 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit is not in this range. Since this value is not in this range, we wouldn't expect that to be the mean body temperature. So this suggests the mean temperature, mean body temperature, um, is not equal to that value. And what it is, is it, it's significantly higher than that 98.6 because 98.6 is below that lower limit in our confidence interval. So the mean body temperature is higher than that 98.6 that we've all probably um, learned and known since childhood.